Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is Enjoy the Ride, and I challenged the team to use either our rocket pop-up or our train pivot panels for a card of any theme. I decided to go with the train pivot panels for this Berry Christmas card, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. The first thing I did is to create several little polar bears using our Winter Animals die set. Now with our animals, they have a little stencil feature that allows you to add facial features to the animals. And since I was using several bears, I actually wanted to change the locations of their faces. So I was just going to quickly show how I did that. The first thing I did is just follow the video tutorial for the winter animals, die cut the pieces that I needed. And then for the stenciling, I did the middle of the ears with a colored pencil in pink. And then rather than leave the piece exactly where it started in the die, I actually moved the die upwards for this bear. And what that's going to do is move his eyes upwards. So it'll just change his expression a little bit. Now there is additional stencil features on that die for the nose and the mouth. And you would use those if you were making a hedgehog. But since I'm using a bear, there's actually a separate snout piece for the bear that is already been die cut and then I stenciled on the nose and the mouth. And what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of glue between the eyes, then I can pick up my snout using my quick stick and then move it there between the eyes. Then I add just a little bit of detailing to the ends of the paws and the feet using a black pen. Now there is a die that cuts a separate belly piece that is designed so that you just lift up the animal's arms and then you slide that belly piece under the arms and then up under the chin, secure it with just a little glue. The winter animals die set includes a scarf. Now that scarf is wider than the bear because it's also sized to fit the penguin that comes in that same set. So when you're using it with the bear, you would just go ahead and snip it to fit the width of the bear. The winter animals die set also includes the stocking cap, which I added to a couple of my bears, but it does not include the wreath. I actually took that out of our Christmas animals die set. And then as a final touch, I added some rosy cheeks using my pink pencil. I found this corrugated silver cardstock in my stash and I thought it would be perfect for my decorator train cars that came out of the train pivot panels die set. And then for the wheels for those train cars, I went ahead and used a black cardstock that has been backed with score tape so that it will become a sticker. And then I'm just using a white gel pen to go in and add the highlighting through the stencil feature. Now, since those are stickers, it's very easy to just lift them up and add them to the train cars. And then I grab some little glitter stickers out of my stash. These are by Stampendous, and it has a size that just fit perfectly in the centers of the wheels. So my bears would look cute tucked inside those train cars, but I actually decided I wanted to see all of their bodies. So I'm making mine into flat cars. And that's an idea that I first saw from Sandy Diller. So a little glue behind just the feet of the bear, and then I'm going to mount a bear onto the flat car. And then I'll put my other bears on the other flat cars. And then I also styled my train engine. So I have all of my decorator pieces ready. And now I'm ready for the pop-up portion of the train pivot panels. And I'm going to die cut that out of a patterned paper. Okay, so typically I would just start training this piece. And that would start with a center fold in both directions. But I have a little modification I want to do for this particular card. And that is because... In the open position, my first two train cars end up behind those mountain folds. So essentially when I go and put my bear on the train in that spot, you're not going to be able to see the bear's head because I've used such a tall item. Typically I use kind of shorter items in those first two spots because of that feature of the die. But I wanted to show a technique for when you do have a tall item like a bear sitting in the train car that you can actually cut away a little bit of the pop-up so that you can see the bear's face. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm placing my first two items with no adhesive just to help me place where the die should go to cut away the head of the bear. Now it would be lovely if I could just tape the die down and cut it just like this, but I can't because I don't want the body of the bear to cut through the middle portion of my train. So what I have to do is take the die and snake it down behind the middle portion of the train so that only the head is going to cut. So the head is now on the upper portion of the train. I run that through my die cutting machine 
and it's going to cut away that bear's head, but the body, since it was tucked behind the piece, did not cut. So this technique definitely works with the bear. The bear's width of the head is such that it'll fit in there and it doesn't cut away either of the folds that you need for that upper portion of the pop-up to work. So you can see it's gonna sit down in there and the folds still work. So you just kind of have to experiment when you're using tall items and make sure that that tall item is not so wide that you would actually cut away some of your folds if you did this. But we're not doing that. This is working just fine. So I'm going to repeat that process to get the head of the bear cut out of the other section of the pop-up. Okay, so that modification is done and now I'm going to continue on just assembling my train pivot panels in the usual manner. So center fold in both directions, then the little side tabs that are out on the engine end. Out on the back of the train there's also the side tabs, but it also actually folds down between the last two train cars as well as out on the end of the train. And then everything moves back out to a flat position again. That was just about training the folds. You choose your card size, but you do need a longer card for the train pivot panels. So I'm going with an A2 long. I started with a piece of cardstock that was four and a quarter by 11, scored in the middle for folding. And then to that, I added a couple pieces of a pattern paper. That's just a very old piece of pattern paper from my stash. And I just cut a smidge off of those panels of paper so that they would fit in there with just a very small border of cardstock. Pivot panels are easy to install inside a card. You just add the adhesive to the outer tabs. You make sure that the center fold of the pivot panels is directly over the fold of the card. And of course you can choose the location so I could slide that one way or the other. And then just making sure nothing moves, I wanna kick those tabs under and attach them to the card. And I just wanna make sure that in the process of kicking them up under, that I don't accidentally pin down whatever's supposed to pop up. So in this case, the engine, I wanna make sure I can still reach under there and it's not been pinned down by those tabs. Okay, switching to the back end of the train, again, the adhesive goes on the tabs, but then also on the outer tab. So there's three tabs on the back end of the train. Then I just kick those tabs under and attach them to the card. And that goes for all three. Okay, and with glue, it's always a good idea to just press it for a second and make sure that it's set up before you start training the card. Now to train this, what I want to see is a valley in the middle of the train, but mountains at the top and the bottom. And once you get those started, then you should be able to just close the card to really train all of the folds. And what's nice about pivot panels is that they still lay nice and flat for you to decorate. So now I'm going to start adding all of those decorator pieces to the pop-up. Now an interesting thing about designer challenge videos is I absolutely am just crafting on camera. Like I do not plan these things ahead of time. And so when I got to this point, I realized, well, I probably need some snow on the ground since I'm doing essentially a polar bear express. So I'm using the outdoor scene die set to create some snowy tree lined hills for the bottom of the card. Now, if you are making your version of this card, I would suggest that you go ahead and add those snowy tree lined pieces before you put in the pivot panels and then you don't have to do any modification like what you're seeing me do here. I actually had to cut a little notch out so that I could slide it in and still go around those pivot panels. We have an optional accessory die for the train pivot panels called the train elements. And what I like to do is to cut the train track out of whatever my slat color will be. So in this case, white. And then I just take a marker to go in and color between every slat so that the rails are a different color. And then take a pen, like a black pen, and then just go in and add like the nails that would attach the slats to the rails. Also in the train elements die set is the railroad crossing sign. And what I've done for today's card is I've used a white cardstock with score tape on the back so that when I die cut it, it's thick and that the words have really pressed down into the piece. And then since that's a sticker, I can pick it up and stick it to my nonstick craft sheet. And then one way to really make the words show up is just to use a brayer with some ink and brayer over the top. You want a light touch on this because you actually want the words to just stay white. So it looks great tone on tone. You don't have to color the piece. Another way that I show in the other video is actually putting ink on the die. So just different ways that you can really highlight those words. And then for the backing piece, I actually extended the post and added a second section of the little red lights. And then for a little arrow sign that says North Pole, I just hand printed that onto a little 
piece of white cardstock and created that little arrow sign. Okay, finishing out the interior railroad crossing sign and a couple stitched clouds from the outdoor scene. And the smaller stitched cloud worked perfectly as the smoke coming out of my engine. Now I first saw that idea by Lois Bach. I've seen several of our design team members doing variations of the clouds as smoke. Okay, repeating elements for the card front. And then for the greeting, one nice thing about our small word sets is that they are the same font. So I was actually able to grab the B and the A out of birthday from word set two to combine with Merry Christmas from word set three to make my custom greeting, which is Berry Christmas. So just adding that to the front of my card and that completes it. And this is just a standard A2 card. So it'll mail easily in an A2 sized envelope. I have a little extra thickness to this one because of the rhinestones that I added to my railroad crossing sign. If I were to use something flatter in place of those rhinestones, it would easily go for a single stamp. If you check the description box below this YouTube video, you will find links to all of the die sets that I used on this card, as well as a link to the blog post for this designer challenge. That's where you will find all of the amazing creations by our very talented design team. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.